be Brett Woodyfield. Todd Wiltshire holding back there. He, of course, has been going like lightning from the gate from Oxford this season. And I think Peter Collins alongside me, this is going to be a tough one from the start. Yeah, you know, Todd Wilkes is a really good starter. He's renowned for that, but he had a really bad injury about uh, five years ago. He had a real bad back injury and broke his pelvis, but he's now coming back after it after a long layoff. There's the lineup from the inside. Chris Lewis in red, Todd Wiltshire in white, Brett Woodyfield in blue, and Jan Stakeman in yellow and black goes from the outside. The girls at the starting tapes there, that colourful too, that starting module in that shocking pink will attract us throughout the night. We certainly won't miss him. There he is. Ray Chinnery is his name, and a uh, real character here. But now the action is going to start, and it's two Australians, an Englishman and a Dane in this one. Heat number one here. It's which is the red and the blue helmet colours. The visitors from Oxford, away they go. Tom Wiltshire in the white, picks it up and gets to the apex of the bed first. Chris Louis on the inside, coming round the outside. Jan Stakeman, this is good for the visitors from Oxford. Tailed off at the rear is Brett Woodifield, but what a start by Tom Wiltshire, Peter Collins. Yeah, like I said, he's a lightning starter. And what a beautiful start he made there. Wasn't from the best position, but of course, Chris Louis in the red helmet knows his way around this place really well. But... Wiltshire's riding absolutely marvellous, totally blocking in there, Tony. Wiltshire in command on the track and out front in white for Oxford. In second place, Chris Louis putting him under pressure on the inside. And look at that pass by Chris Louis. True brilliance from the home rider to leave Todd Wiltshire training. Will Wiltshire come back? Oh, great battle up front. Louis going fast with just over a lap to go. Wiltshire chasing him back in third place statement. Tail off at the rear is Brett Woodyfield. But what a wonderful ride by that man there. Chris Louis, the home captain lifting down the back straight, picking up the speed, showing the quality, showing the knowledge of the track, and now taking the checkered flag with a wheelie, ahead of Wiltshire in white, third place Stakeman in yellow and black. What a ride by Chris Louie to take the chequered flag and give him his side. Well, a great start there, but the backup for the visitors means a share of the points at three all in this one. And a great winner for Chris Louie in red. Not on your caption, I hasten to add. It's Chris Louie in red taking that chequered flag. Second place in white, Todd Wiltshire. Third in yellow and black, Jens Stakeman. From the start, it was competitive. Yeah, well, here we go on the start. There's Chris Louie on the inside, but of course, there in the white. Todd Wilch has made a beautiful start. We can see that again. Todd moves first. You can see there he's like a wheel ahead before the others have even moved. He gets to the first corner and totally chops Chris Louis on the line there. But Chris, with his home track advantage, kept plugging away as he normally does round that inside. He rides the inside so well and he put pressure for the whole race on Wiltshire. Now, at this point, he draws alongside him, just pushes him a little bit too wide, and it's now curtains for Todd Wiltshire as he's off the race in line and in second place. Then on, Chris Louis had it very much his own way to take the chequered flag. Todd Wiltshire in second place, Jan Stakeman in third. A... Do at their best, and they've got a lead from the front, that's what you did. A good start for you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good start to the meeting uh, for me personally. It wasn't a very good start, actually, out there. We've changed a lot of parts with the clutch, and the uh, clutch was a little bit too fierce, so uh, we'll have to put that right. But uh, no, the track's good, very good. Yeah, i, I seen that... Uh... Todd made one of his tremendous starts. If you watch the video, he just got a little jump on you there. But I noticed for the first lap, Yan was coming up your bumper there. He's like pushing you hard. Took you a lap or so, then you got the track down, then you made your charge. Yeah, the track's a little bit back to front. Um, it's been quite grippy on the outside right from the word go, and tonight it's not there. So uh, I struggled a little bit to try and go around him, realized I couldn't do it. I was taking a lot of his dirt as well, which was slowing me down. So uh, how, did, how did you feel when you made that approach to the inside of him? I mean, sometimes he's a little bit blockish. Yeah, I had a feeling that he wasn't going to turn in real early because he'd been missing the, the, the curb going in. So uh, I felt quite confident that we wouldn't come together. That was a superb, superb pass. Thanks, mate. Right up. Let's take a look at that overtaking manoeuvre because you just mentioned it there again. Let's, uh, let's see in the monitor there. You can see it just down there. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you can see Todd hasn't gone in very tight. He hadn't been going in tight um, for, the, for the other corners either. So uh, I managed to get a nice line on the inside and the, the groups there. You can see the bikes going forward quite well. So. Uh, and then it was a lot easier from the front. This is quite a trick track, so it's quite difficult from behind. In the white helmet colours on the inside there, Alan Ross is next to him in red, South Cloud. In gate three, in yellow, Steve Johnson on the outside. Well, in blue there is Phil Morris, and away they go, picking it up well. Steve Johnston, who used to ride for Ipswich, knows the track like the back of his hand, and the Aussie is flying down that back straight, pursued by South Clouding. On the inside in white, Alan Rossiter. At the back in blue, Phil Morris going wide. But out front, now we get Johnston under pressure. Indeed, there from South Clouding, and another competitive race, PC. Yeah, Clouding's really having to go here, but Johnston made a great start from the outside position. He's riding very well, there's a lot of dirt, a lot of grip low down on the track, and he's using it all. 
he, like Tony said, he rode here two or three seasons ago, had a great season here before he moved to Oxford, so he knows this place very well, Tony. Two races developing here, Johnson in front of Clouting up front, back in third place in White's Alan Rossiter, just ahead of Phil Morris, but the points for asking, points for taking out front, they're in yellow and black, uh, and looking to take the chequered flag here, but at the back, the battle is joined between Rossiter and uh, certainly coming out front there now, we see Johnston takes the chequered flag with a wheelie in yellow, second place to Clouting in red, just on the line in white, third place there goes to Alan Rossiter, a 4-2 in favour of the visitors who now go into the lead, and a fantastic ride by that man there, Steve Johnson the Aussie, who used to ride here for Ipswich and Steve Johnson certainly is going to make his presence felt here tonight, the 27 year old comes from gold mining country in Western Australia, and he certainly produced the gold medal in that heat, Steve Johnson of course uh, and he, uh, well he has a workshop which he shares with your colleague Joe Screen but here from the tape, Peter Collins, Steve Johnson made it like a jet. Yes, he did. He's just uh, had his hair shaved off, actually, as well, Tony, and I think uh, he's saving a bit of weight with that, although I can't see that myself. But uh, he's certainly very streamlined without his helmet on. But we can see there, he makes a great start there from the great three position. He just makes a beautiful start right down there. He's on the racing line. He pulls across there, right in front of uh, Savilas Clouton. And there you can see Rossiter in the white helmet also right in at this point. But, of course, that was a lots of grip there from Johnson as the bike stands on the back wheel as he enters the back straight but of course the way he rode that race there was nobody that was going to get by him on that race. Nobody got to the lineup. to Pinker, Boyce, Svab and Hurry. Remember they alternate in gate positions between the home side and the away side and they alternate between inside and gate two to move outwards. To Pinker at the moment has the inside gate. Boyce will be a tough nut to crack in gate two. And remember the visitors at the moment for Oxford lead by seven points to five desperately tight, but this heat is going to be even tighter, I think, with a check pair in action for Ipswich. White helmet colours, there is Boyce. Wait for Boyce against Golov later, that'll be some clash. The inside there in blue is Thomas Topinka. Looking down on Topinka there. Starting Marshall Chinnery getting impatient. There's the line, right across the tapes as we look down on those. Starting Marshall walks away. Side, picking up well to Pinker in the blue helmet, but going round the outside is Paul Hurry. Hurry's speed picking up the grip takes him down the back straight in front, pursued by Topinka in second place. Coming through on the inside, Tony's far. Tail up at the back is Craig Boyce, but Paul Hurry is certainly living up to his name. Yes, he is. That's Craig Boyce at the back, and that's very unusual because he's normally such a quick guy. But uh, of course, Paul Hurry's covering for him. He is going very, very quick in this race. He's riding a very good line. He's improved immensely over the last two or three weeks, Tony. He had a very impressive performance at the weekend as guest for Eastbourne down on the south coast, but Paul Hurry now moving away ahead of Tony Svab of Ipswich in second place. If it stays like this, it'll be level points to end this one, a remain two points lead for the opponent, for the uh, visitors. But out front now, it's Paul Hurry going well in yellow, pursued by Tony Svab of Ipswich in red. Back in third place now, processional is Thomas Topinka in blue. That surely is how it's going to finish. They're going wider and wider. The wheelie again shows the chequered flag that greets Paul Hurry. The points again shared in that one, three points apiece. It's now eight points to the home side, Ipswich. It's ten points to the visitors from Oxford. Paul Hurry is the heat winner, and certainly an impressive wide all the way from the tapes for that all-round specialist who rides grass track and long track on the continents many weekends and covers many, many miles or kilometres, depending on which country you are. Well, a great start. I think more importantly, the commentators were mentioning what a great start you had. Um, yeah, it was quite a tough start, really, off gate four. Um, that's not really intended to be a favourite one for anyone, because um, when you're racing, that is the racing line, so it tends to be a little bit slick there. Um, but yeah, good start to start with. Was the, was the dirt kind of picking up a little bit? Looks like it's getting a little bit of a cushion on the outside there. Did you use that in your favor? Um, yeah, a lot. I've run in swing, hooked up, and got yeah. a good run round. Yeah, you're getting a lot of speed down the straightaway. I see the other guys were struggling a bit, hitting the dirt and going wider and wider, and you seem to hold your line pretty good. I tried to. I tried to turn a little bit as well and get my wheels in line a lot yeah. earlier, um, yeah. and then try and stand a straight line if I can. You feel your bike set up right? Um, it feels pretty good at the moment. Yeah. Uh, I might have to make a few changes later on, but at the moment it feels good. You seem pretty comfortable out of the start, and then a good one from the outside. Try again later on. There you go. Well down to Paul Hurry in his first. Having had a ride, he goes from gate two. He jetted from the tapes last time out. And Lawrence Hare with his first ride, a Suffolk-born lad. He comes from Emslit nearby. Previously rode for Rye House, Edinburgh and Newport, as well as Ipswich here. Number seven, there is the Johnson. There is the uh, 
It's, uh, he's, uh, yeah, the track's looking really moving. good tonight. Um, there's lots of grip there around the inside, and uh, the dirt's moving out nicely. I'm very, very excited to watch Thomas Golob in this race. It's going to be interesting as Thomas Golob goes there. We're going to have to watch him from gate number three. Wait for the tape scarf, and away they go. And Golob it is screaming from gate three to pick up the apex of the bend, but Johnston is putting him under pressure. Golob picks it up down the back straight, opens up a lead. Johnston in second. Now the man in fourth place is Lawrence Hare as he's pushed to the back by the talents of Phil Morris moving through. But out front, Thomas Golob, fast, furious, and certainly pleasing the Ipswich fans here as he stretches it down the back straight. Ahead of the man in yellow and black, that flying Aussie Steve Johnston. Johnston picks it up and the back, the fence has collapsed in a heap, and at the back, way up on the far corner, there's Lawrence Hare. Well, certainly the referee, Jim McGregor, stopping that one, and it's going to be a fair time before that fence is repaired, because Lawrence Hare made a complete hash of that one and demolished half of the Foxhall Stadium here. Here's how it happened. Well, we can see Lawrence Hare has a big blast around the outside. Too much there on the gas, runs totally out of track, straight under the safety fence. Fortunately, that fence is quite safe in as far as there's no post behind it. It's collapsible, but it's going to take quite a while to get that back together. But I'm sure he's going to get excluded for being the stoppage of the race, Tony. Well, it looks as if it's the, if you can read those lights, the white light is on, which means Lawrence Hare is the rider who's excluded by referee Jim McGregor as the cause of the stoppage. They'll be repairing the fence and the race will be restarted with just three riders. Thomas Golob and Phil Morris representing the home club Ipswich and just Steve Johnston and Susie is where the action is. Yeah, thanks, Tony. What, in your eyes there, Lawrence, what happened? Did you think you just went in a bit too hard? Yeah, I'd, I should have waited maybe another couple of laps. I made a, made a slip up and let um, Phil through. And he, so, uh, you know, on about the second lap, I think he's had a ride, you know, he knows where the holes are. Just caught a little bit of grip and pushed me wide. Went straight in the corner and let him by. And, uh, just got a bit too eager there. <laughs> OK, well, you know, it's, everybody's pretty much psyched up here tonight, so you feel like it was just absolutely your own mistake, do you? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I thought it was a bit more on the outside to hold me up, you know, I went mean, ran wide for the big, the big one around the outside, but just slid away and I just got rid of it, you know? OK, thanks a lot, Lawrence. Tony? They're all twitching and leaning over and adjusting, and that's how they psych themselves up. Heat four is coming up. Let's go to our commentary team for the start. Just three riders into the rebound on the inside in blue. Phil Morris next to him, yellow black Steve Johnson and Thomas Gollum makes a flyer from the start once again, pursued by Johnson. Back in third place, Phil Morris. Morris will struggle to keep up here. Johnson struggling enough. Gollum's out front. He's fast. He's furious. He looks unbeatable in this. This is Thomas Gollum at his best. Yeah, he's really on form, isn't he? I've got my money on, on him this year for the World Championship. Although there he's oh, just gone. Oh, look at that! Motor failure. Well, we tempted fate there. Thomas Gollum is struggling. He's out, but look now who's leading. Steve Johnston will open the gap. Good fortune here for Oxford. We'll find out what happened to Thomas Gollum. Tragedy for the star pole. But the race goes on with just two riders while Gollum gets off his machine on the corner there. And with just over a lap to go now, out front is Steve Johnston. Johnston riding with flair, riding with enthusiasm. Phil Morris is going to get two points in second place. Tragedy for Thomas Golob, we'll find out about that in a moment. But look at that man, Steve Johnston out front. He's going to get three race points. Steve Johnston, a bit fortunate there with the wheelie. In second place is Phil Morris, happy with two points. Remember, Lawrence Hare was out. The incident, of course, concerning Thomas Golob may make the talking point of this meeting because he doesn't too often suffer mechanical failures. But Steve Johnston there is certainly the man who sails through. Thomas Golob doesn't get any points, of course, because he didn't complete the race and he goes back there talking to Magda Louie who will be wondering exactly what went wrong that time but that man Steve Johnston won't care he won the heat and of course with that three points to two for the visitors they now extend that lead by another point and they lead by 13 points to 10 Oxford in front by 13 points to 10 and certainly dominating this meeting Oh, well, there's a start. You see that Gollop, what a start he made ahead of Johnson there. He's really going well. Like I said, he's flying this year. Absolutely everything working perfectly. And I must have put a jinx on him there by saying I've got my money on him for the World Championship. We can see there there's that smoke coming out of his bike there. Something really heavy has gone on that engine. That smoke on the exhaust pipe because it's leaking oil out somewhere, possibly from a hole that's uh, appeared in the crankcase or something. So that looks serious to me. But, of course, Johnson takes over from the lead. And what a win there for John O. He was in the right place to get that second place and there's John O's wheelie over the finishing line for three points.
Well, so we need maximum points. Yeah, it's good. You know, Thomas had a bike problem, obviously, so uh, don't know what happened with him, but I had a win in my first one to win then, so hopefully we can go all right. I mean, certainly they were dropping like flies in that one, and there only ended up being two of you racing, but the first the heat two it was that you won, so, so now six points for Oxford, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's good, but it's a long way from over. These guys, especially uh, Thomas and Chris, are very strong at Ipswich, so we'll just have to keep it up. But you know what? There's something you've got to see at home here. A baldy. <laughs> <laughs> What's all this in aid of? Um, it was sort of a bit of a uh, grudge bet sort of thing I had with a mate of mine who uh, did his as well. It's sort of like you do mine, I'll, you know, he did his, I did mine, that was it. You used to have really long hair though, didn't you? Wasn't it a bit of a major decision? Yeah, I think I've gone in, uh, in the last 18 months, I've gone from having the longest hair in the league to the uh, shortest. So yeah, it's a bit extreme, but there you go, anything for a laugh. A little dicky bird, Tom, with uh, Alan Rossiter uh, did it for you. Yeah, well, he was, uh, he was involved. It was sort of a late <laughs> night and uh, I think someone spiked me drink, all 20 of them. <laughs> And uh, Roscoe was the one on the end of the scissors, so um, I'll, I'll pay him back. Well, that's no surprise, is it? Tony, back to you. <laughs> I think inside in yellow and black will be Jan Stateman there, you see on the caption. Next to him, Tony's far from its which Gate three from Oxford is Todd Wiltshire. And on the outside, Thomas Topinka. Two Czech Republic riders in action here for the Ipswich, which is going with gate two and gate four. Remember, throughout the meeting, the home team, that's Ipswich, wear the red of the blue helmet colours. The visitors from Oxford wear white and yellow and black, and it's alternate gate positions for the team riders here. And in this one, gates one and three occupied by the visitors from Oxford. A man in yellow and black, Jan Stateman, bottom of your picture on the inside. Starting Marshall gets the riders up to line. Starting Marshall moves away, the motors roar, and up go the tapes, and away there in the red helmet colours. Tony's far hits the apex of the bend first. Todd Wiltshire goes wide but comes through and now picks it up, and this is going to be tough on the bend. Good line chosen by the race leader, Tony's far, but fading away at the back is his teammate to pink her into last place. And there certainly is a battle out front now because Todd Wiltshire is chasing Tony's far like a shadow, and this isn't over yet. No, it isn't, but Tony looks very, very quick. He's holding a good lead there from Todd Wiltshire but like we said earlier Tony Sparb's father was actually the world ice racing champion uh, in the 60s so I mean he's got a very good pedigree and it looks as though he's going to keep that going and win this race. Pedigrees like race horses Tony Sparb from the Czech Republic out front going wide picking up the grip of the lap to go knows where the speed is the two visiting riders from Oxford are in second and third which means if it stays like this but look the pressure on the back is coming from Thomas to Pinker and it's not all over against Jan Stateman at the back but Look at Topinka. Could he make it in time? We'll have to wait and see. But no! There goes the Oxford pairing in second and third place. You can take your choices to the order because the heat winner in red was Tony's farm. Yellow in white, yellow in second place, looked to be second in white. In third place was Todd Wiltshire. It was desperately tight. The heat was won by that man, Tony Sfarb, in the red helmet colours. We'll have to wait for the referee on second and third. Yang Stakeman and Todd Wiltshire got it. The points don't matter in a team meeting. Level on points for that heat. It's now Ipswich 13, Oxford 16. But this was a lightning gate by Tony Sfarb. Yeah, we can see the start here. He almost ducked under the tape, although uh, Stakeman on the inside made a very good one as well. We can see this again there. Stakeman's the first to move, but uh, we can see there the rider in blue looks as though he's going real well around the outside, but of course, Tony Sfarb on the inside pulled right down to the inside there to pull away on that first turn, and he's pulled out five, ten yards on that first corner. We see there the two Oxford boys there fighting for that uh, second and third place. We can see the overtake here when they go past to Pinker, and the two Oxford boys here now are going for this drawn heat. Well, it was tight in second place, and the referee awarded it to Todd Wiltshire in right ahead of Jan Stakeman. But Tony Sfarb is the man who took the chequered flag. He took it in style and he kept his team in it. Tony Sfarb, the heat winner. Todd Wiltshire second, Jan Stakeman third. Three points the piece. It's now Ipswich 13, Oxford 16, with five heats gone and ten to go. You know, uh, I didn't make quite a good start in the first uh, race, so uh, I made some changes and uh, I knew that uh, Jan is on the inside and he's going to try to make the life difficult for me. And also, I know he's a brilliant start and I knew I had to make a jump on him, which, which I did. Before, before that race, I didn't call you to win it from watching your first race. Uh, so you must have made some really good changes because, I mean, you just, ex you didn't look like Jan might have got the jump on you, but you just exploded and went. What changes did you make? Well, uh, uh, I put a smaller jet to just make it a bit uh, more sharp, you know. Uh, I have, I run the, the bike fairly, fairly flat, you know, so yeah. because the track is quite slick and I like it flat yeah, so you... it's pulling away and uh, just make it just that bit sharper. Yeah you seem to be really aggressive on the racetrack. How's the racetrack shaping up? 
Yeah, it's good. I mean, when I came first time over, I couldn't believe they want me to race here. I didn't never like the track, you know. But uh, I'm getting used to it. I'm thinking still I'm better in weight at home, but it's getting there. Yeah, you looked really well out there. Thank you. The witches to do well in the Elite League. Let's go down to our commentary team for the start of the next heat. Birch is heat six, and as you see on the captions, Brett Woodyfield is on the inside for Ipswich. Lawrence Hare for Oxford goes from gate two. Chris Louis, the Ipswich captain, goes from gate three. Alan Rossiter from Oxford on the outside. This is a great chance for Ipswich to pull something back with their captain, Chris Louis, in pole position. He's going from gate three, and he, on form at the moment, should certainly pull this out of the bag. And uh, Brett Woodyfield there, we see the rear view of him in the blue helmet colours. He has the inside gate on this one and moves back the starting marshal, having to get these uh, riders up to tape. Brett Woodyfield in the blue helmet colours there, nearest to camera, the young Australian looking to produce the goods in this one. And Chris Louis surely will win it, Peter. Well, the way he went in that first one, Tony, when he came from second to win that one, it was a brilliant first ride he had, so we'll see what he can do in this one. Starting Marshall moves away, Louis looks at the tapes going up, he does, picks it up, challenge on the inside there, it's going to be important here, Lawrence Hare takes backstage, Chris Louis goes down the back straight in front, pursued by his teammate Brett Woodyfield, this could be the chance for Ipswich to get back in it now, a bit of team riding is important here, Lawrence Hare putting the pressure on, Alan Rossiter tailed off at the rear at the end of lap one, but the Ipswich pair in front and looking in command, but look at the pickup from Lawrence Hare down the back straight. A former Ipswich rider is getting among them here and picking up speed there. A real battle in second place. Chris Louis out front, but a great ride at the moment by Lawrence Hare. Yeah, this time he seemed to get it right. I know we saw him go through the fence earlier on, but he's managed to take another point there from Brent Woodyfield. But uh, again, Chris Louis way, way out in front. So the way things stand at the moment, this is going to be four points to Ipswich, was going to put them back in the hunt. A pile up at the back, though, Peter, because he's fallen down. Referee has to stop this and he has the opportunity to award it probably red, white, blue because they're on the last lap. We'll wait for the referee, the rider in yellow forming. Referee Jim McGregor will award it. The man in yellow, Alan Rossiter, has fallen down. He is out and excluded by the referee who awards the race to that man there in red, Chris Louis. Alan Rossiter is excluded. That means it's four points to two in favour of the home team. It's now Ipswich 17. Oxford 18, desperately close at the moment. Well, uh, certainly from that point of view, Peter Collins, it is going to be a tight meeting all the way. And we predicted Chris Louis was going to win it. We didn't predict Hannah Rossiter falling out, but certainly it's closed the gap. Well, hurry of Oxford gate three, and Sal Clouting goes on the outside in blue. But what about the battle here, Peter, between Gollum and Boyce? Well, they're next to each other on the start, so it's going to be interesting. But uh, I think they've sort of buried the hatchet. But uh, this is another race, another day, and new things can develop. So, you know, if they push and shove going to the first corner, something could happen chaotic. Well, it could hardly be closer. They are next to each other on the starting grid there. The Australian Craig Boyce there in the white helmet colours as we look down on that starting gate. Next to him, Thomas Golob is hanging back. And, well, I'm sure they'll be closer than that when they get into that first bend. This is a contest that all here at Foxhall Heath have been looking forward to tonight. This is heat number seven. Remember, the visitors from Oxford lead by 18 points to 17. Could it change with this heat? Starting Marshall goes away. Boyce is holding back. Boyce picks it up. Boyce and Gollum going to the first bend. Hardly a wheel between them. Boyce takes it wide. Gollum, no! Boyce is down into the fence. Are coming together there. We'll have to wait for our referee. Boyce is back on his machine. Notice it. Referee lets them go because Boyce has remounted. They keep going out front, though, also. Lots of things have happened here because in yellow and black, Paul Hurry has picked it up. Golob is back in third place now. Completely the reverse order from what we might have thought. And what a race this is. Yeah, Thomas Golob doesn't look as fast in this race. That second bike possibly isn't as good, but of course, and all that confusion there, Paul Hurry dived through a gap into the lead. So now we've got Paul Hurry going out for his second win. Well, Craig Boyce remounted despite the error, but now with a lap to go for the race leader, Paul Hurry in yellow and black, back in second place is Sal Clouting in blue. Thomas Golob is third and looking strangely slow, slow here, and not a great day for him, but out front, Paul Hurry is looking good, he's looking effective, and he's going to take the chequered flag here. Disappointment for Golob, but the points once again shared in the heat, which means that it's still just one point in it with seven heats gone, because that man there, Paul Hurry, is the heat winner ahead of Sal Clouting and Thomas Golob. The home pairing from Ipswich hits three points apiece, the heat score. It's now 20 points Ipswich, 21 Oxford. It was important from the start, but all sorts of things happened thereafter.
Yeah, we can see this here again on the start. Something did happen, like we said, as they take off from the start. Boyce is on the inside. We can see him there in the white. Now, of course, uh, Golob in the red helmet there comes right across the front there of Boyce. Now, Boyce, he holds his ground for a while, but then suddenly he gets to this point. Too much drive, tries to pull the bike back pulls it back far too much, down he goes. He did very, very well to hang on to that bike there, but that caused him to end up in last position because possibly if he'd have stayed down, the referee may have stopped the race and put all four riders back in. But Paul Hurry's style was effective. He had time to look back, and certainly from Paul Hurry's point of view, a great meeting, but I think the Oxford captain, Craig Boyce, is in our studio now with Jonathan Green. He's the one that fell down. Just um, trying to get the uh, helmets off, and as soon as we do, we'll, we'll talk to the man. But Sam, uh, while he's taking his helmet off, um, just give us some idea. You were looking at it very closely, and you were saying, yeah, I know exactly what I want to ask him. Well, the thing of it is, is, I mean, when you're in a race with Thomas Golov, you either, you either attack him or he attacks you, you know? And I'm sure that... Uh, what, Come on over, Craig. What Craig was feeling, we'll ask him right now. Could just give, give us an explanation now to start. I know that you thought you kind of had him, but he was starting to lean on you, wasn't he? Yeah, you know, I made the jump, you know, and then he pulled a little bit of room, a uh, little bit of lead coming into the car. So I thought I could push him hard in the first corner. I was there, and I think I got hooked onto his bike or something. And you can have a look at it now, Craig. That was it, you know, so. Look down there, Craig. Yeah, you know, so. Basically, it looks like you're just coming in, expecting him to really lean hard, and you're leaning on I him. I think I just caught his handlebar on my leg or something, and down I went, so. So you felt something grab you when you were in the middle yeah, of Yeah, something pulled me down, so maybe it was Thomas' handlebar, but that's racing. Yeah, good stuff. But go out and do it again, man. We want to see you win some races. So do I, mate. Right on. <laughs> well done again to Craig, boys. Well, there you go. You know, I mean, this is, this is one of those things where when you're in a race with Thomas Golob, you know, you got to go for it, because at the same time, he's going to be going for it. And he was out on the second bike there. Um, he was trying desperately to get across Craig. He couldn't quite get enough over him so he can control the track. And they both moved straight up the high line. And I'm sure that from look to me, like Craig was expecting him to kind of drop it on him. So he pushed a little bit, but then there was nothing there and he just overshot the corner. How good. And on the outside, Brett Woodyfield, the Aussie from Ipswich, who was brought over to ride for Peterborough. He problems some work permits early on, but the rider from Adelaide now Firmly an Ipswich which In three rides, he's had two wins so far. In blue next to him, Bill Morris. Gate three in white, that's Jens Stapel. On the outside in red is Woodyfield, who shoots from the tape, but Johnson picks it up, takes them wide, and now they'll have to pick it up for the back behind the flying Aussie. But his teammate is there behind him, the Dane Jens Stapel. And this at the moment is a 5-1 in favour of the visitors, but coming through well in blue there is Phil Morris, is picking it up. And certainly in white, Jens Stapel is going backwards and has gone down, takes the pull at the back. Jan Stateman is there. Jim McGregor, our referee, has stopped that one in the interest of safety. Jan Stateman is up protesting. He wonders what happened. And the rider excluded is Brett Woodyfield by the referee as the prime cause of the stoppage. And that is certainly going to make some interesting viewing when we see that replay because it was all action stuff in this one. And there we can see what happened, PC. Yeah, Woodyfield pulls alongside him as they go into that turn there. He straightens up in the middle. He takes his line and down goes the rider in white there which is Jan Steckman and that's a shame because they were really in the hunt that, at that moment and there goes uh, the uh, the rider in red there Brent Woodyfield we can see it again he pulls alongside going into the corner he takes the rider's line he takes the rider's line as they hit the turn and down they go off into the fence and uh, Steckman there really you know got something dished out to him which was a bit unfair so of course the referee have, has excluded the rider in red Woodyfield for the cause of the stoppage and a place called Camp Golly in Western Australia just about miles from anywhere up he goes and he picks it up but coming across on the outside is Jan Stateman Stateman is putting the pressure on and picking up the grip and going to pick up some speed but Johnson picks it back and holds him up, but tailing off at the rear is Phil Morris, and at the moment all going well this time for the visitors from Oxford, who'll be able to extend their lead here. Good team riding, Morris will find his work cut out to get through this. Picked up by Stateman down the back straight ahead of Johnston. Johnston will hold off Morris, and there's going to be an avenue for team riding here, PC. Yeah, I was just going to say that, Tony. Have you noticed how well these two are team riding? If they can just hold it now on this last lap, then they'll get a 5-1, the Oxford boys. But of course, the rider in blue there, Phil Morris, is having a big go, but it's a really good ride here from the two Ipswich Oxford boys. They move into that last lap now with the two visitors in front, comfortably held by Stateman and Johnston together. No room 
room for Morris to go through. This will be a 5-1 in favour of the visitors and will put them in command after eight heats because this is heat number eight. The chequered flank now greets Jan Stakeman in first place in white. In yellow in second place was his teammate there, Steve Johnson. In third place is Phil Morris. That is 5-1 to the visitors. It's now 21 points to Ipswich. It's now 26 points to the visitors from here. It's Oxford, the starting marshal in pink as a contrast. He moves away. Up go the tapes and away on the inside goes Lawrence Hare to pick it up, but coming across in red, impressively Tony Spark, picking up the grip and moving into second place is Thomas De Pinker. If it stays like this, it'll be a 5-1 on the home team, really closing the gap, going wide at the back is Lawrence Hare. He's having a battle with De Pinker in second place, Rossiter tail off at the rear. Out front, impressive is Tony Spark, picking up the speed, his teammate in pursuit. This looking good for Auckland for the home side Ipswich. Yeah, the strange thing here is that Tony Spark isn't looking back at all for his mate. Now that's not good news in team racing. He should be slowing down and letting him pull alongside and totally block the rider in white, Lawrence Hare, because Lawrence Hare is really having to go to try and get past Topinka. Well, He's not made it at the moment, but uh, they should really be uh, team riding. Motor problems indeed for Alan Rossiter once again, having motor problems and just about to be lapped by the speedy Tony Sfarb. And when he's lapped, of course, in speedway terms, that means he's out of the race. Out tumbles Alan Rossiter with the retirement. Final lap here, and it sees Tony Sfarb, and this is going to be a 5-1. The Ipswich fans are cheering because they've got just the result they wanted. Their second heat advantage of the night. It's now 26-27 with nine heats gone. Great team effort, that. Those Czech Republic riders are delighted with that. Tony Sparb does the wheelie. Thomas Topinka is with him. And Oxford now know that they are up against something. It could hardly be closer with nine heats from the inside with two wins out of two. And Paul Hurry is going well, PC, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Like you say, those two heat wins, I mean, he's doing very, very well. Of course, Chris Lewis had two heat wins as well. So, I mean, it's going to be a real tussle to decide which one of these two can win this one. Well, the fans are enjoying it here. They've painted their faces. The kids have come in free in some cases, and certainly there's the thumbs up. They're enjoying the meeting. Just one point in it. This is heat number 10. Chris Louie in the red helmet colours. They're looking down in yellow and black. That's Paul Hurry. In the blue helmet colours there, Brett Woodyfield. Louie in the background. In uh, white is Craig Boyce. But look at this. We've got some star quality here. We've got certainly Paul Hurry, who's looking international quality on the night. Great voice, the Oxford captain, yet to score a point. Chris Louie, a maximum two wins out of two. The starting marshal pulling them up to tape. A bit of games of Jim here. Ray Chittery having problems. Perhaps it's that uh, glorious coloured unit that he's wearing outfit. What a colour that is. Here we go then. This is heat number 10. Motors raw. The starting marshal is patient. He walks away. Bit of creeping there at the taste of Craig Boyce, but from the outside, Chris Louie comes across the field, picks it up, it's Ipswich, one and two. Coming through on the inside is Brett Woodyfield, finding pace from nowhere. Ipswich now lead a bit of team riding. Paul Hurry's in third place. The disappointing Craig Boyce is at the back, and this is just the restart that Ipswich wanted. Yeah, I wonder if Chris Louie's going to team ride this one. He's got to look back for Woodyfield because he can't leave him exposed because, of course, Paul Hurry's very, very quick behind him. Chris Louie's not looking round, but the thing is, at the moment, if it stays like this, this will really put Ipswich back in the running. Chris Louie, two wins out of two so far. Chris Louie in the red helmet, colours in front. There he is, fine style, fine speed, fine skill, but now under pressure at the back. Certainly in second place there is Woodyfield, but somehow Hurry lost it on that bend a bit, and Woodyfield holds on to it now as they go into the final lap with Ipswich, looking like a 5-1. They go into the lead for the first time tonight with this one, if it stays like this, but still the pressure is on in second place, and coming through is Hurry, but hold it there. He does in blue, is Brett Woodyfield in second place. Woodyfield tumbles into the fence as he finishes there, but he'll be delighted with that as he went past the winning post. Brett Woodyfield cannoned into the fence away to our right. Chris Louie, there he is up on his feet, Brett Woodyfield there, saying thank you to Paul Hurry for avoiding him as he fell down, but that's a 5-1 to Ipswich, their second heat advantage, and that now means it's 31-28 in favour of the Ipswich switch which is and the fans will be saying that interval has made the difference and Chris Louie coming out has made it three out of three very important one for Ipswich just then yeah it was uh, we need some points to get going now um you now we're getting close to winning out and we can win it so uh, everyone's got to do their bit were you worried because uh, I was just saying that uh, Chris Louie did pull away were you worried that you were going to get caught 
I was getting loads of grip, so I, I didn't think uh, whoever was behind me was going to get past. Um, so I just let it drift out a bit, and there's a lot of grip on the outside there. And, I knew once you hit that, he's not going to get past. So I said before that start of that race, that's probably the crucial race was that race 10 to see which way it's going to go. I watched you at the start line. You were so determined. You got right into it straight. Your job was to get straight over the top of Paul Hurry, and you did exactly what you were supposed to do. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, I didn't think I'd make the start, to be honest. It's, it's, it's so slick out the start tonight. It's a lot slicker than usual. and. Uh, well, you've done, bike up and, yeah, you've done a heck of a job. I mean, you making that start, getting over the top of Paul Hurry, left the hole outside for Chris to get around there. Yeah. And it was a perfect team, oh, that per perfect first turn. Is on gate three in the blue helmet colours for Ipswich. So far, no reserve replacement. So far, no tactical substitution. And so far, very little between the teams throughout the meeting. And it's going to be like that right through to the end. We have now five more heats to go. Remember, the final heat, hit 15, is over six laps. But this one is important once again for both teams. That is Thomas Golob we're looking down. Poland's highest paid sportman. That is Jan Stakeman. Back to Golob on the inside there, wearing a helmet colour of his own design, last year's design, I believe that is. And uh, Thomas Golob yet to win a heat tonight. He's had a few problems, but, well, he thinks it could all change. We heard from him in the pits, and he thinks perhaps he's got his machinery back in order. All the riders holding back. Our starting marshal, Ray Chinnery, in that colourful outfit, trying to get them back up to tapes. As we look down, the referee dead in line, Jim McGregor, in charge tonight. But now, the riders settling down on the tapes for this heat 11, just three points in it. The home seat in front now, away they go. Golov picks it up on the inside. Wiltshire comes across with a vengeance. And the man from Sydney is stretching his lead. And down the outside in blue goes Sal Clouting. But Thomas Golov picks it up now. He's going to take up Wiltshire. Wiltshire is coming down this straight in front and stretching the lead. Golov has work to do. A fine ride at the moment by the Aussie as Golov goes wide. Yeah, Wiltshire's such a good starter. We saw him have a beautiful start he made there, and Golov's really got no answer to him. Golov's trying everything. He's riding the wide line. He's trying inside, outside. But as it stands at the moment, Wiltshire's actually pulling away, and Savile's clouting. He's putting Golov under pressure. Well, certainly efforts there from Todd Wiltshire, the 30-year-old Australian from Sydney. is looking classy. He's looking with the style that he had when he did so well in that world final back in 1990. Golov is now in second place. Clouting is third. Back of the rear is Jan Stakeman. The points will be shared in this one if it stays like this as they come towards the checkered flag, as they do now with Todd Wiltshire, the rider in white, taking it. Golob does a wheelie in red. In third place in blue there is Sal Clouting. The points are shared at three points apiece. It's now 34 to Ipswich. It's now 31 to Oxford. It's still desperately tight, but Todd Wiltshire there, the winner in flying style, producing for him his first heat victory. Win there, Todd. Yeah, I needed that badly. Um, two seconds in the first two rides. Um, it's not a bad start of the meeting, but it's, you know I could do better. And uh, you know to trap to trap someone like Golub, you know, who's on the top of his form at the moment, and um, off K4 was a good result. Obviously, you're going well with your own form because uh, I've been looking at the results that you've been putting in. You're leading the side at the moment, pretty much. Well, I, I, a lot of things. So. I think the average says that, but uh, I think it's a team effort for Oxford right now. Um, you know, I'm at the top of the averages, but, uh, you know, all the way through, we're solid, and uh, the bottom four boys are most definitely doing their job, and we're getting results. You're, you're known for your starting. I mean, you, your first one, you got a really good start, but you got passed by Chris up the inside. That one, you made the start, and you put your authority into it. You rode the right line. It seemed like there was a little bit of grip. Your bike was working well. Yeah, I just changed the gearing and uh, felt good, but, yeah, exactly right. I, I made a good start in heat one, but I was just... I was too much... Taking it easy, really. The track was a little bit dodgy, and I don't sort of ride here often, so I was just being too cautious and uh, just really let Chris in the door, really. What do you think is going to happen in Heat 13? Well, it's exciting, isn't it? It's yeah. uh, got a new team partner now in Lawrence Hare, and uh, I, mean, I know he likes his track, he likes the outside, so um, all the same, I think it's important for me to get out there and try and get in front of Chris and Thomas and, and slow them up. If you get Steve Johnston, the reserve replacement for Oxford, goes from gate two, and Craig Boyce, the so far scoreless Oxford captain, goes from the outside. And as uh, I think... Uh, Samo Maloko said Boyce has got to produce the goods a bit here, Peter. Yeah, Boyce has not scored a point tonight, which is very, very unusual. But Steve Johnson, you know, is a real specialist round here at Ipswich. I mean, he comes from a massive track in Perth in Western Australia, 680 metres, and this is half the size. So it's very unusual how he can ride this one so good, Tony.
This is going to be an important heat. It may be decisive. Remember, Ipswich, the home club, lead by three points. Away goes the Starling Marshal. Up go the tapes and a flyer on the inside for Tony Spar. Pursued by Johnson, it's tight. Johnson comes through on the inside and picks it up. Pursued by his teammate, Craig Boyce, who could pick up points here now as Boyce moves into second place. Disappointment at the back, certainly, for Sammy Clouting. But now leading well and leading fast is Tony Spar. The battle is joined in second place, but those two riders from Oxford are holding it well they're having a battle but out front Tony Spahr the rider from the Czech Republic the 24 year old is looking brilliant at the moment and looking fast yeah Tony Spahr's controlling this race he's pulling away he's got a nice cushion between him and the two Oxford riders Steve Johnson there in third place second place is doing well but of course Craig, uh, Craig Boyce looks as though he's going to get his first point in this one Yes, but look, we spoke too soon because the battle is joined now with Clouting coming through and with a lap to go. Will Clouting catch Boyce at the back because it's looking interesting. The pressure is on. Clouting is trying to come through and put the Aussie under pressure. Can Boyce hold it up? Out front, there's no doubt at all who's going to be the winner in red. It's held. Boyce takes third place, but his teammate in front of him in yellow in second place, Steve Johnston. It means that the points are once again shared and it remains, in fact, a three-point advantage to the home side. Wiltshire goes from the inside. Chris Louie, the Ipswich captain, with three wins out of three, goes from gate two. Steve Johnston, who's only been beaten by an opponent once tonight in his four rides, goes from gate three. And Thomas Golob, who so far has not produced too many highlights tonight, he goes from the outside. So this complete league meeting here and proving splendid entertainment for the fans in this balmy summer's evening. Breeze getting up a bit, though, now. Riders, a little bit impatient at tapes there. Nerve ends jangling. That's Wiltshire on the inside. Next to him in red is Chris Louis. Motors roar, up go the tapes, the battle is joined. Louis picks it up. Golob goes round the outside. Golob and Louis in front. The Ipswich fans cheer because this is what they wanted to see. This will open up a gap now of seven points going into the final two heats if it stays like this. But the challenge is on. Golob picks it up on the outside ahead of Chris Louis. Back in third place is Steve Johnson. Disappointing but Todd Wiltshire at the rear. A lap and a half gone. It's going very much the way of the Ipswich witches. And Thomas Golob, the star pole, picking up the grip, picking up the speed on the outside. His teammate and partner, Chris Louis is on the inside. It's Ipswich, Ipswich all the way with a lap and a half to go. They've got this in control. Yeah, that's right, Tony. There's something going on here that not a lot of people will perhaps notice. Thomas Gollum's bike isn't particularly very fast. And Chris Louis is riding a fantastic captain's race here. He's shielding him from the opposition. On that first turn, he let Gollum run around the outside, held the opposition back, and he's just uh, now riding in convoy with him for this 5-1. And it is a 5-1 picked up by Thomas Gollum ahead of Chris Louis. And in third place there is Steve Johnson. Just the result they wanted, Ipswich. Five points to one. They take that heat. They lead by 42 points to 35. A seven-point lead for the home side as they go into the last two heats. And this could give them victory. But Thomas Golob's first heat victory of the evening is exactly what they wanted. And 42-35 is the mark. And Thomas Golob, three race points. Chris Louis, two. Steve Johnson, just one. And that, a third heat advantage for Ipswich tonight. And they took that heat in just the way they wanted. Peter, as you explained, there they go out front. Yeah, just look at Chris Louis there. He knows Chris knows he's quick, but he realises Thomas Gollum's made the start and he's on the outside. So Chris Louis now realises that he's going to just hold that inside line, let Thomas go, let Thomas have all the room, ride the fast line round the outside where we know that he likes to ride, all that grip, that speed's out there. Chris is riding the tight line, which is much slower, and that was a brilliant ride there to gain five points for the Ipswich team. Well, exactly what they wanted, and the second 5-1 of the night in favour of Ipswich. Remember, Sparbent to Pinker did it in heat number nine. It's a tactical substitute and didn't in heat 14 because they were seven points behind. They've decided that Johnson and Hurry are their best bet. The gears change to get more speed. They need a 5-1. Clouting on the inside for Ipswich. Paul Hurry from Oxford goes from gate two. Thomas to Pinker from Ipswich, gate three. And Steve Johnson in yellow on the outside for the Oxford Cheetahs. It's vital for Oxford that they get a heat advantage here to have a chance as they go into the last heat. 
This is going to be important. Remember, this is heat 14, the one remaining heat that each team has to nominate two of their top three scorers, and they race over six laps for the same points. But away they go now, and on the inside, picking it up is Clouting. Clouting picks it up, but look at the speed there shown by Paul Hurry. Hurry in command now, looking for support and getting it from Steve Johnston. It's 5-1 on the boat if it stays like this with Oxford in front. 5-1 it will be if it stays like this. A brilliant ride by Paul Hurry out in front from Steve Johnston with a goal. This is fantastic speedway to make this a meeting, Peter Yeah, Collins. this is just what Oxford need. This will put them right back in the hunt there. It's not all over now. We can see now that the two Oxford boys, Paul Hurry's leading, John O there in second place. He's, he's covering that second place. He's going to stop those two boys, two Ipswich boys, from getting by. Well, it's going to be very all, well. It's going to be all on the last race if it goes to this as we go into the final lap with the Oxford Cheaters a 5-1 on this. At the moment, Paul Hurry in sterling form is out front of the Aussie Steve John. Johnson back in third place is Sammy Clouting. Disappointment for the Czech. Thomas to Pinker at the rear. But this is going to be a 5 1 to the visitors. The visiting fans look. Go, oh, can he make it? Oh, he has just. And we seem to have problems there as he won that because he only just made it. The heat won by the rider in white, Paul Hurry. In second place in yellow and black, Steve Johnson. And I think in the end, the man in the blue helmet colour, Savvy Clouting. But look at that, he only just made it, PC. Yes, he did. We can see there the tyres totally exploded. It's blown out. He did so well there to carry on and get that win. But it was very, very close at the, at the finish. Yeah, we can see this point here. We just get to the corner there. The tyre seems to let go all at once. There was absolutely no warning with that tyre. Now, that was the last turn. Now, he's done so well. The bike's straightened up. Now, he's actually riding on the rim. That rim, the metal part, is digging into the track. And he's just about can see the chequered flag. We saw it there. He's got another 30 metres to go. Goes over the line. Steve Johnson realises there's a big problem. He goes over the line on the inside, Steve. But there, of course, Paul Hurry has got to walk back to the pits. But what a great finish. And it's just a good job that didn't happen like on the earlier corner. He won by Paul Hurry with three race points. Steve Johnston, two. Savalas Clouting, one. 5 1 in favour of the visitors from Ipswich. And the home side leads by 43 points to 40. With Oxford winning that wins to his name goes from the inside gate. That's for the home club Ipswich. Paul Hurry of Oxford goes from gate two. Chris Louis, the Ipswich captain, goes from gate three. And Steve Johnson, the flying Aussie, who so far has 12 paid 14 from this meeting at reserve, he goes from the outside and has been the key to Oxford's effort. But nothing less than 5-1 will win the meeting for Oxford. Yeah, Steve Johnson has a problem here on the outside, although he seems to have rectified it. They brought something out from the pits. So, we're just about to move away. All the riders are there. The referee has put them on two minutes, so nobody can really find a start now. This is going to be competitive. There's the clock counting down. Top left-hand corner, good screen. That scoreline, Ipswich 43, Oxford 40. A 4-2 to Oxford would not be enough. Ipswich would win if it went like that. Away goes the starting marshal, off goes the tape to the flyer from the inside for Tony Sparb and coming across his teammate Chris Louis. Out front, it's Louis and Sparb. The Oxford riders are nowhere. This time it's going to go the way of Oxford. There's a long way to go. This is the end of one lap. There are five to go. Remember, it's a six lap race. But at the moment, the home pairing in front, Tony Sparb in red, Chris Louis in blue, pulling away there. A lap and a half to go, but it's switching command. Yeah, we saw Chris Louis again on that first turn. He looked straight across for his mate. He knew they'd both made the start. He let his mate come around the outside. Now he's shepherding him round. Uh, there they go, Sparb slightly in front of Chris Louis, covering that inside. But uh, what a team right here from these two. Coming up to the halfway stage, and no pressure being put on the Ipswich pairing by Paul Hurry in third place for Oxford. At the Paul Hurry, sorry, in third place for Oxford, Paul Hurry. In fourth place is Steve Johnson, but now with just over two laps to go, Ipswich in command and set for a victory, set for a 5-1 here, but look at this in the back, piling into the fence, and the referee will have to stop that one and order a rerun, surely without Paul Hurry, because he tumbles into the fence there, Paul Hurry, and we have to wait for the referee's decision there as to who is excluded, because at the back, a real problem there, and and Paul Hurry has a problem here, and I hope it's not too serious. Paul Hurry is excluded by the referee as the prime calls of the stoppage, Peter. Yes, we can see this. That's Paul Hurry there in the white helmet. He enters the corner here. He locks up a little bit, gets too much grip in the one spot, lifts, and he goes straight into the fence there. Now, he seems to have hit that board, and 
I'm sure uh, that uh, Paul Hurry is going to be excluded, I'm sure. Well, the referee has excluded the rider in white. Paul Hurry is the prime cause of the stoppage. You know, we really, it was important to us for confidence to get the league underway successfully. And uh, it's a shame it had to end, you know, with, uh, I think it was Paul going through the fence quite hard. But um, come on in here, Tony. It's a team effort and you certainly showed that. Well done. Yeah, it's, it's great, you know, that we've pulled it back and uh, definitely it's a good to win on TV. Good job, boys. I mean, you, you did, definitely that was a vital heat. Obviously, it could have gone either way. I mean, you see what happened to Paul earlier. He got a flat tire, you know, and you guys just had to finish off the six laps. You made a good start, first corner, look for your partner, and that, that basically sewn it up. Yeah, it was a good first corner from, from Tony, and uh, it's pushing me hard. I, I didn't want to do that for six laps, but <laughs> in these sort of conditions, you've got to do it. Yeah, that was <laughs> yeah a good it was job. a bit wide, you know, that the guys could catch us up and uh, trying to get us. Uh, to front as much as we could and then we could slow down a bit, but it was a good race. I think you got your bike pretty well dialed in at the end, didn't you, Tony? Yeah, I did, yeah, it was fantastic today, yeah. as I said, I like it flat and definitely paid off today. Yeah, good job. All right, congratulations to both of you. Well done to Ipswich, well done tonight. We'll see you again in action, I'm sure, in the Elite League. But of course, next week, we're getting to see the man himself, Sam Ermolenko, as we see and we go north to Hull against Bellevue. And Sam was just telling me, Hull have not played at home in what, four weeks, Sam? Yeah, it's been four weeks for whatever reason. We had an individual that was rained off by a bad, bad storm. Um, we had a, a, a team, a day where we had a break. And then uh, last Wednesday night, obviously, we didn't want to play up against uh, the big football match. So we took a breather. So this is our first match uh, when we come and see us. Well, it was a great win for Ipswich. My thanks once again to Sam Malenko. We're looking forward to seeing you in action next week, and I hope you are too. Until next week, from all of us here at Ipswich, good night. See ya.